Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this topic is types of fault. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this. What are the different types of faults and explain uh, like uh, stuck at fault. So it may be like this. Uh, the different types of faults will be asked and it will be asked to explain one or two type of fault. As such, as the name indicates, fault means you are getting certain error in the output. This error may be developed during manufacturing of the circuit or during processing of the circuit. Broadly, there are two types of fault. One is the fault due to the physical connection that is a physical fault and another the fault or error you are getting at the output due to the logical connection that is the logical fault. So we will discuss all the types of faults. First, we will talk about the logical fault. So first type of fault is stuck at fault. Stuck at fault, as the name indicates, means any input is stuck at one particular level. For example, again, in case of stuck at fault, there are two subcategories. One is stuck at zero, another is stuck at one. First, we'll talk about stuck at zero. As the name indicates, a particular node in the circuit permanently remains at logic zero. That means permanently stuck at logic zero. Consider an example of AND gate. This is the symbol of AND gate. We are considering two input AND gate. So there are two inputs A and B and one output F. We know that in case of AND gate, the operation is the output is high if both A and B, both the inputs are high. So this is the truth table. A, B are inputs. Ideal output I have written. So 0, 0 output is 0, 0, 1 output is 0, 1, 0 output is 0 and for 1, 1 output is 1. This is the ideal case. But suppose the input A is remaining 0, is stuck at 0. That means it is remaining 0 due to certain error, due to certain physical connections. Uh, then in that case, irrespective of value of B, what I said, input A remains 0 due to certain fault. Then whatever value of B is there, output is always 0. Because we know that in case of AND gate, if any one of the input is 0, output is 0. So here I have written SA0 because it represents stuck at 0. So A is stucking at 0. That means A is permanently uh, maintaining its value at logic 0. Same way stuck at one fault. So as the name indicates, the node permanently stuck at logic 1. Consider an example of OR gate. Two inputs are there, A and B. Output is generated by F. We know that in case of an ideal OR gate, it is an OR gate. So if any one of the inputs, either A or B is high, output is high. So truth table is 0, 0. Ideally, output is 0. Then for 0, 1, output is 1. 1, 0, output is 1. 1, 1, output is 1. What I said, if any one of the input is high, as shown by these last three uh, rows, then output is high. This is the logical or ideal case. Consider that the one of the inputs, let us say input A, is stuck at logic 1. That means permanently it, its value remains at 1. Then irrespective of value of B, since this is remaining at 1, irrespective of value of B, every time output will be 1. So this is an error because even if you are changing the value of B, the output remains 1. This is called stuck at 1 fault. Next type of fault is transistor fault. It may happen that the transistor is either, any one of the transistor is either stuck open or uh, stuck short. That means the transistor is getting open circuited or it may happen that the transistor is getting short circuited. We'll consider an example of a CMOS inverter. This is the circuit diagram of CMOS inverter. V in is input, V out is output. We know that at the upper side, uh, this network is PUN, which is designed using PMOS. So this is the PMOS, this is the NMOS. Since this is the inverter circuit, ideally, if you are applying 0 at the output, you, are, you should get 1 at the output. Then if you are applying 1 at the input, you should get 0 at the output because this is not get or inverting circuit. So I have written the operation in short. If input is 0, so if V in is 0, input is 0, then in that case, this PMOS, this is the PMOS, PMOS is on and NMOS is off. PMOS is on and NMOS is off and V in is 0. Since PMOS is on, output will be logic 1 because you are applying 0, you are getting logic 1. Then another case, if input is 1, this V in is 1, then in that case, 
NMOS is on and this part is connected to ground. So NMOS is on and PMOS is off. Since NMOS is on which is connected to ground output will be zero. That means by applying logic one at the input you are getting output zero. This is the ideal case uh, of uh, CMOS inverter. Now let us consider that any one of the transistors, any one of the MOSFET is uh, producing certain errors. For example, if NMOS is stuck open, that means this NMOS, this part is stuck open. That means it will not conduct because it is acting as an open circuit. Actually, what is, where is the role of this NMOS? Whenever you are applying input one, then NMOS is on. But this is remaining open. That means it is not conducting. In that case, it will not conduct when input is 1 and the output will be undefined or you are getting certain uh, floating output. So this is the case which is called stuck open condition. In this case, any one of the transistor is remaining open because of which you are getting uh, some undetermined uh, output irrespective of the value of input. Similar to this, another transistor uh, fault is stuck short fault. So as the name indicates, any one of the transistor is getting short circuited. For example, this PMOS gets short circuited to VDD or NMOS gets short circuited to the ground. Again, we will consider this same operation. So this short condition, stuck short name indicates that any one of the transistor will start conducting permanently in earlier case any one of the transistor was getting open circuited here it is getting short circuited that means it conducts permanently so let us assume that if PMOS is short circuited that means this upper part is short circuited so this VDD will be directly connected at the output so irrespective of value of input since this is short circuited that means VDD will be directly connected at the output always you are getting output 1 irrespective of the value of input now let us discuss the remaining types of fault. So next is the bridging fault. When two or more lines or when two or more conducting paths gets short circuited, then it produces errors at the output, which is referred as a bridging fault. So this is basically the fault or error created at the output because of the short circuit taking place between two or more lines. Next is open circuit fault. As the name indicates, if there is certain broken connection or if certain conducting path is uh, broken or disconnected then it creates the floating output this is referred as open circuit fault next is the delay fault delay is the time required or time taken by the signal to reach at the output so there are two types of delays one is gate delay it is the delay time required when the signals are propagating through logical gates and second is the path delay it depends on the path which is uh, followed by the signal to reach at the output so due to this delay it may happen that the wrong data is latched that means stored somewhere in the circuit because there is a certain time period within which the signal should reach at the output if there are certain delays then it will produce certain uh, storage of wrong data or the uh, wrong data may get slashed. Next is the transition fault. This is related to the transition from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. So again, this transition should be completed within the specified or uh, designed time period. If it is not happening, it creates errors at the output, which is referred as transition fault. Next and important type of fault is the crosstalk. Crosstalk is related to the uh, mutual transfer of information between the two conductive paths. So it may happen that the two conductive paths are nearby uh, to each other. So there may be inductive or capacitive coupling because of which there is a crosstalk effect. So it may happen that suppose one conducting path is carrying um, high power signal or high frequency signal. So due to the crosstalk, it will create high uh, voltage spikes in the neighboring wire or neighboring conducting path. This type of effect is called crosstalk. Next is power supply effect. It, as the name indicates, it is related to the connecting power supply. So it may happen that the power supply which is connected to the circuit itself is faulty or there are certain errors or there may be certain incorrect grounding in the circuit. So these are the faults related to power supply faults. 
so dear students this is about the type types of force and its general explanation so that's it for today's session thank you thanks a lot for watching this video